Lord of the Rings has such a unique fan base. They're fans all over the world. It's really amazing to see. We're all just banding together in this moment when the atrocity of this show is occurring, but it's really just great to band together with the fans and laugh at it, which is what we're going to do. We're going to laugh at this. This is Elrond and Galadriel kissing. That is an actual thing that happened in the latest episode of Rings of Power. I think it was titled Doomed to Die. <laughs> you know, what I really want to talk about, though, like starting off, is that this didn't need to happen. This was specifically contrived by the showrunners to elicit a certain reaction. It is antagonistic at this point. It is willfully malicious to insert this into the show. They knew very well what they were doing. Most fans know that this is Elrond's mother-in-law locking lips. They know that. Payne and McKay, the showrunners, know this. Some are thinking maybe, oh, they couldn't have read the books. No, they have. They know very well what they're doing. This is willful intent to bastardize Tolkien's work and to antagonize its fans. You are eliciting this reaction and you deserve to be mocked. So we're gonna mock <laughs> you today. It's really twisted. I don't wanna laugh at it, I want it canceled. Yeah, that would be the ultimate. But at, th at this point, it's just fan fiction. This is some, you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of the storytelling approach under current Disney Star Wars with the latest installments of the live action Star Wars. I heard it spoken many times or referred to many times with Dave Filoni's approach in particular, that it's him contriving stories in a way that just feels like it's a kid playing with action figures. That that's his storytelling approach, mostly just centered around certain characters facing off against each other, playing with action figures. And in this show, I get the impression that this is a kid playing with his Ken and Barbie dolls. Who can we ship this week? If it wasn't bad enough for the Galadriel and Sauron shipping thing to exist, here we have Elrond, who is locking lips with his future mother-in-law, Galadriel, and there is no excuse for it. There is no reason for this thing to exist. Let me set up the context for the scene, I guess, for those of you who haven't wanted to stomach this <laughs> show. Elrond and the elven force are going to Eregion in battle, and they stop, I guess, the force once they see that Adar and the orc army have Galadriel captive. Okay, so they all stop, and... I guess they're, we're going to negotiate for Galadriel. We're going to forget the fact that Eregion has been under siege for weeks, I guess. And yeah, everyone just stops in their tracks once Galadriel is unveiled. And I guess this indicates they're going to have to enter negotiations before the battle actually happens. So there's this whole thing of Elrond, although I think High King Gilgalad is there currently, but Elrond is going to negotiate for him, I guess. He's going to negotiate with Adar. And what happens is that the negotiations don't work, whatever. They're going to attack and the battle is going to happen and Galadriel is going to be executed. And Elrond is like, okay, can I at least say goodbye first? And then this happens. And then the kiss happens. He goes over and people are trying to justify this moment, saying that it wasn't romantic, that it was chased. The entire setup of the scene, there is like romantic, epic music swelling at this moment. And he really lingers this moment seems to last forever it, it's every part of me revolts it's repulsed by this they just linger in that moment prior to this kiss elrond takes off his leaf pin on his cape and, and he, then he goes over to galadriel and then they have this moment and then he gives her the pin so they're saying oh well that was just to distract from him giving her the pin so she can later free herself except that's not how a distraction works <laughs> He would have had to have passed the whatever the pin while they were kissing for it to serve as a distraction. But as it occurred, they kissed for quite a while and then he passed it to her. And in this shot in particular, this is when it happens. And I could clearly see it plain as day from the perspective of Adar and all these other orcs watching, in particular, the orc on the right has a full view of what's happening right now. It was so clear that he was handing her this pin. Everyone's just fine with it. Like, whatever. We're just going to choose not to focus on that because they're uncomfortable with the situation too, with this PDA. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. You can't even justify it. Well, it's not romantic. The way the shot is set up, the way it's filmed, it is clearly romantic. The music that they play, 
the fact that he lingers in it in this moment and then he hands her the pin like in full view of everybody you could clearly see it honestly it's so contrived how they've written galadriel i don't believe that this was the only means for her to escape because as it is, we've seen her take out an ice troll in like five seconds. We've seen her best numerous Numenorean warriors. She's gotten herself out of so many scraps. <laughs> it's clear that this scene doesn't need to exist. It's clear that she can get this out herself. There's any number of ways for her to have gotten out of the situation. They specifically made this scene, contrived this scene for this kiss to happen. And even later on in this same episode, all of a sudden, miraculously, it seems, Arondir shows up and dispatches the orcs for her. So it's just, again, any number of ways you could have gotten her out of this situation. I just don't believe that this was in any way necessary. No, they, they wanted this to happen. They had malicious intent to just piss fans off and further bastardize Tolkien's mythology. What does this imply also? That what Elrond can't have Galadriel, so he's gonna settle for her daughter? He can't have Galadriel, so he's gonna settle for her daughter. I don't know, is, is that what they're implying? It's so strange. And I'm sorry, there's no other way to justify this scene. It did not need to happen. There was any number of ways for Elrond to have gotten the pin to her, if that is what needed to happen. He could have just held her hand. He's allowed to get really up close and personal. He could have just held her hand and said goodbye and slipped it through to her hand. I, I don't know. I can think of a dozen ways right now off the top of my head. But also, there's just so many conveniences and contrivances that I can definitely see her getting out of the situation like she's done so many other times <laughs> in any number of convenient ways. Is this Twilight? Yes. It's certainly not what Tolkien wrote. And that's what they promised. Uh, Payne and McKay promised that they were going to write something Tolkien didn't. <laughs> we wondered why Celeborn and her daughter was suspiciously absent. It was so we could have a Galadriel, Elrond, and Sauron love triangle. Yeah, they wanted a, a thruple. Ugh. Every time I saw it too, it's not several times, it's just vomitous. Vomit inducing. Why? And I even saw like articles being written now from some mainstream media sources that are like, this is a very controversial thing and it didn't need to happen. It kind of, even the fans are saying that this kind of distracts from other things and other elements that they enjoyed from the show because now the conversation is just centered around this extremely controversial moment. <laughs> That's all anyone is talking about. That and the battle. Uh, this was like the big battle scene. This was, okay, the Siege of Oregon is happening. But now no one's really even talking about that now because you decided to inject this into this and it completely has dominated the conversation. And rightly so, because this is what they wanted. If you wanted the fans pissed off, well, congratulations. 